At its 3,700-mile-an-hour orbital speed around the moon, the lunar module Snoopy, with Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan aboard, is now making its rather slow climb uh, up uh, by comparative speed, slow climb at any rate, up to the command module uh, for the rendezvous and docking a little later tonight. There were some close moments there, the precise details of which we do not know, uh, as they swept within 13 and a half miles of the moon's surface. Uh, they apparently had some uh, uh, tumbling, or at least uh, some disorientation, right after they cut loose the uh, descent stage of their two-stage uh, lunar module. Perhaps our correspondent Nelson Benton and test astronaut Scott McLeod out at Grumman Aircraft in Bethpage, Long Island, can tell us about it. Uh, Scott, Nelson, well, uh, from what you heard on that transmission, what happened? Well, Nell, uh, Wooler, I'm afraid that unless I was there, I really couldn't say from the bits of information we got back here, I think it'd just be pure guesswork to try and estimate what had happened in the vehicle. Well, it, it, it did have se seem to have something to do with their attitude, however, did it not? Well, I'm unsure whether it was their attitude or it could have been the eight ball here that was uh, tumbling or something else, depending on how they switched from one computer to the other. I could explain with Nelson how they intended to make that burn, if that would help. Well, it might. Uh, they were talking considerably about uh, AGS, the abort, abort guidance system, yes. which you might explain uh, to us and how that uh, is uh, plugged in at the uh, given moment. They uh, clearly were uh, uh, fighting the spacecraft in some fashion. Tom Stafford was so busy we didn't hear a word from him, and Cernan's uh, uh, brief communications were certainly uh, laconic. Well, the abort guidance systems that, that you were just speaking about is controlled from over in the corner there where Nelson is. I don't know whether you can see it or not, but the computer that does control it is very similar to this one that is the primary system. <clears throat> the burns that they do in the spacecraft, a uh, type burn like this, is done rather than using the throttle, which is behind me, and manually going through a burn, the information is inserted into the computer itself, either the primary guidance computer or the backup or abort guidance computer, and then the two astronauts, Gene doing most of the work to, for the insert, and Tom backing up in case there is a problem, and he must do it manually, stand by and wait for the burn to be done automatically. We don't know yet, I don't think, Walter, whether or not uh, uh, it was necessary for Tom Stafford to, to override the uh, abort guidance system uh, when that uh, gyration, I believe it was described as, when it occurred. Uh, it did occur, I think, right at staging, so uh, uh, that's that's what... That's the point in time that the problem is, but uh, I guess there'll be some uh, head scratching for some time to come as to exactly what happened. I imagine not only some head scratching, but uh, I would think that uh, uh, until there is a very clear readout of what happened and uh, why it happened and uh, how it can be <coughs> prevented from happening again, that uh, for the first time in the flight of Apollo 10, we see a possible constraint to the flight of Apollo 11. Uh, quite clearly, if there were wild gyrations of this uh, spacecraft uh, tonight, uh, there in that uh, very close proximity to the moon, uh, they, they can't tolerate this uh, uh, again. It, uh, however severe it may be, it is far from the normal, and uh, there's going to have to be a great deal of consideration given to what happened tonight. Uh, Bruce Morton in Houston uh, has a report that, uh, on the work going on at the Manned Spacecraft Center during this flight to prepare for Apollo 11. Maybe, uh, Bruce, uh, you've heard something around there that uh, would indicate how seriously they take this problem. Well, Walter, they take it very seriously, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that uh, for the first time something's come up uh, which really could change the plans for Apollo 11. Uh, obviously, nobody here is sure yet what happened either, but uh, they are sure about what they want to do. They want to talk to the astronauts at considerable length, uh, both on the return trip and once they're back on the ground. And they want to monitor all of the uh, electronic data, the various uh, bits of tracking information that come down here. That's a process, as you know, Walter, that takes some time, uh, two or three weeks usually. 
So I think it's fair to say that the, the future of Apollo 11 as a moon landing mission is in doubt now, and uh, it's going to be some substantial period of time before we know, and, and indeed before the directors of this NASA program know which way it's going to go. Uh, this is the first thing like that that's happened. Up till now, it's been pretty much a textbook flight. Uh, they may have lost a few photographs, but the moon mappers say they have a lot of those anyway. This, for the first time, is a, a real serious worry. Uh, Bruce, uh, uh, it is true, of course, that when they blast off from the moon, uh, they're leaving the ascent stage behind on a stable platform on the moon. And if this, uh, if this was a malfunction tonight, was directly connected with the separation from the ascent stage, uh, then it may be considered when Houston begins to assess all of the data and uh, gets the debriefing from these uh, astronauts that they will determine that the solid platform for the ascent stage uh, would uh, negate any such problems of, uh, of, of guidance of the lunar um, ascent stage itself. Well, that's a possibility, Walter, but the, you know, we're not sure yet. It, it could have been an attitude problem, and if it's uh, the attitude in the ascent stage, uh, then it seems to me they're in trouble because you've, uh, you're on the surface and you've really got to start going pretty well straight up. Uh, yeah, that's at the right. Beginning of that. <laughs> right. I, I didn't mean to uh, suggest that uh, all was well because uh, they, they will have a stable platform, but it is uh, one of the considerations I'm sure that will be fed into the mix, as they say. I hope you're right. Thank you, Bruce. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. Houston's just messaged the uh, lunar module that they already have analyzed the problem uh, when they got that wild gyration at staging, and they believe it was because one of the switches in the lunar module was thrown into the wrong position, a remote control switch, it's called. If that uh, analysis proves to be correct, then uh, presumably all will be well uh, in the spacecraft, and there will be no more concern about that particular problem. We'll be back at 11 o'clock Eastern time for rendezvous and docking tonight. This is Walter Cronkite at the CBS News Space Center. This has been a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 10.